All right, we are live. We are live. We are live. <sighs> Melody. Hey, Tara, how you doing? Hey, everybody, I'm, how y'all doing? Hey, Brittany, how are you? I am. Okay, wait just a second. Let's make sure I got everybody. Okay, now I can see Melody. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a little difficulties then. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So welcome everyone to Let's uh, to Talk Therapy. Uh, Sister Let's Talk, I'm your host, Tara, and... And I'm your host, Melody. How y'all doing today? Great. Yes, hey, Sarah. How are you? We are, you know, we're trying to, we went live tonight on Facebook instead of YouTube, but make sure you follow us on YouTube and we're going to upload this video later on tonight on YouTube, but we have an interesting conversation tonight, uh, blurred lines. We've been talking about blurred lines for a little while now, haven't we, Melody? Yes, we have. We've talked about the blurred lines in relation, well, and in everything relationships <laughs> um we touched a little bit on mental health how to deal with the pandemic that's going on right now we talked about a good bit of things but tonight we're going to talk about domestic violence yes and and the blurred lines and everything that's going on with the pandemic because right now the domestic violence is on the rise right now Hey, Joyce, how are you from Atlanta? How's everything going on up there? You're right. Domestic violence is something that... Domestic violence is on the rise. Yeah. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Hey, Joyce, how are you from Atlanta? How's everything going on? <laughs> okay, I got a backdrop. Hold on, Melody. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of popped up. So, um, it's, 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 it's on the rise, and it's something that we're not talking about. We're not yeah. talking about domestic violence. Um, since this quarantine, we know we have, um, you've had to be in close proximity with your children, your family, your husband, your significant other, um, your wife. And sometimes a person can be verbally abusive, but causing them, being quarantined, the stress, the anxiety, the uncertainty of it, it can take it from verbally abuse to physical abuse. Yes, because there's a lot of factors that um, play, play into that. Um, of course, you know, I did some research on it and what a lot of people got to realize and understand Domestic violence is not just an issue of a husband and a wife, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Um, domestic violence can pertain to anyone relational as far as family within the home. So it could be a domestic violence issue with a sister, 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 brother, you know, with a, a aunt, niece, aunt, nephew, uncle, nephew. Those can be domestic violence um, issues. And then when you're speaking of domestic violence, you're thinking of, of abuse. And abuse is more than hitting someone. There's also the manipulation that goes into it. There's verbal abuse. And all of that is heightened by the situation that we're in right now with this pandemic because People are on edge, you know, your finances are changing. They're uncertain about certain things. And then there are persons overall mental health. They may have not displayed those domestic violence tendencies before, but now everything else is heightened and they may have some mental um, challenges that going to bring that to the forefront at this time. Exactly. And that's what we are seeing. We um, with, the, with the data that I, I found that domestic violence is up like 80%. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence has risen 80% since we have been on this uh, national quarantine. Now, the, 
one thing I did notice that child abuse has gone down. But the reason for that, because the children are at home and there's no one to report it. Mm -hmm. So if we know that domestic violence has increased, we can almost guarantee that child abuse has increased, has, has risen just about 80%. But because they're at home, they're not going to the doctor, there's no teachers to report it. That's not, those, those statistics have not been reported. But, you know, being in quarantine, and I think I put this post up earlier, and it was from like a few, seven, eight years, 11 years ago, you know, during times of um, stress and trauma, it pulls out your true character. It pulls out your true character. And what we don't realize, you know, one of my friends used to say all the time, every actor has to lay his part down eventually. Mm -hmm. And that's very true. Yeah, so people can put on and put up with you for, you know, different amounts of time. But when you in pro close proximity together for a certain amount of time, it can cause that true character of that person to come out. Now, there is never a reason to be abusive, verbally or physically abusive. I don't care who it is, whether it's in an intimate relationship, like you said, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, it's never a time to be verbally abusive. If a domestic violence or physically abusive, it's, that's just not, it's not necessary. It's always a way to, to communicate or just walk away. But we know in the society that we live in, people don't just do that. They react, <laughs> they don't respond, they react. True. And um, I know you were saying that the child abuse is down and domestic violence has um, risen, but I think the numbers may actually be a little bit higher than that. And the reason I say they may be higher than that is because that's reported. Right. A lot of people are not reporting it because a lot of women are trapped in that, okay, we're in, we're in, in um, COVID-19, a lot of things are shut down, it's quarantine, so I don't have um, uh, anyone to actually reach out to for that assistance, so they're actually stuck. They feel like they're stuck in those situations. I did do a little bit of research and reaching out on this morning. Um, our safe homes of Augusta is still actively open and helping. Um, at the end of the talk show, I'll give the telephone number for that. They are still actually open and helping those that need assistance. And also the domestic violence hotline is um, still up and running and they actually have a new feature that they added where you can chat with them via com computer because now that we're in quarantine, you're constantly around somebody more than likely in the home. So you can't pick up the telephone you know, and call and be like, well, you know, they over here, you know, be my <laughs> thing. Yeah, because yeah, then you got a whole nother fight, you know what I'm saying? Yes. But they have a feature now where you can chat with them through your cell phone or on your computer, your iPad or whatnot. And once you end the chat, is you're not able to locate it in the browser. So if somebody came behind you to do a search of what you looked at on the computer or what websites you've been to, they won't be able to find it. So I'll give all that information at the, at the end of the call. But we, my main concern is if you are in a situation like this and if you find yourself in a situation or unsure if you're actually in, a, in an abusive um, situation, because if you're unsure, more than likely you are, you are. reach out to somebody. Yeah. Um, at Let's that talk point. about that. I don't want you to go too fast because so many women and men, because we don't want to exclude men because you yeah. have men that are in abusive situations also that don't really realize that they are, that, that they are in abusive situations because it, it has become their new normal. Yeah. And most of the time people that are abusive, the abuser is a very manipulative person. So they know how to manipulate and control because abuse is never about the physical part. It's always about the control. Mm -hmm. So 
a lot of people, they've been in a situation so long and, you know, sometimes it's more of physical abuse. Domestic violence starts off usually as verbal abuse, manipulation, control, verbal abuse, and then it escalates to physical abuse. But that's not always the case. You have a lot of times people, because manipulation and verbal abuse can damage a person to the point where they don't know they're being abused, you know, constantly telling a person that they're dumb and they're stupid and nobody loves them and, and making them feel like they're not, uh, uh, in, that they are insignificant and they're not smart and what they say doesn't matter. After years of that happening, the mindset, the neurological part of the person's mind, it changes and they start believing, I don't know this is the best way to say, it, they start believing that lie and then they are in almost like automatic mode because their brain has created this pathway almost from mm -hmm. that trauma. It's made it, it's, it's created its pathway. So because it's created that pathway from that abusive, verbal abusive trauma, their, their senses, their mindset is on automatic and they don't really realize a lot of times that this is abuse. It's just in their mindset, oh, that's just how that person is. That's just how they are. And, and I'm glad you said that. But let me let me throw this out there. There's a flip side to, to the verbal and the controlling also. Um, because I experienced that myself um, in a relationship. It's not always them telling you that you're ugly, you're not smart. They have more manipulative and cunning ways of turning that, that you feel that without them actually so much saying it. And it's, it's a control thing because a lot of your abusers, they display those narcissistic tendencies, mm -hmm. um, always wanting to be in control, never wanting to take responsibility for something. It's always an outside, you know, issue that calls them, you know, to be the way that they are or whatnot. But then as I'm gonna say as women, because I'm a woman, you have to also pay very close attention because you could be in a situation where that person wants you to be totally consumed with them. Yeah. Totally, totally, mm -hmm. totally consumed with them, because this is the situation I was in. Totally consumed with them. Your world has to revolve around them mm -hmm. and they basically kind of cut you off from everything outside and it's easy say that again i don't want you to go too fast because <laughs> there's so many women that are currently currently in this situation and i'm glad you're being transparent tonight because there's so many women that are listening or they're gonna that's gonna hear this live that are currently in this situation and they don't know that they're in this situation and they don't know how to get out because, and I, you know, because of course I know the story, um, because they're giving them material things. So giving them material things. And if you're not used to, or if you haven't fully experienced a man being a, 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 a provider and wanting to take care, because they're nurturers now, they're going to take care of you but your world can't go beyond them. Mm -hmm. um, they basically cut you off from everyone and everything that, that was in your life. That's their way of controlling because you really don't know anything but them. You may have the house, the cars, you know, taking the trips, going to the restaurant and all of that, but your world consists of, of them. And I'm gonna I'm a be a little transparent with this. My world consisted of them so much they didn't even want me to go back to work. They were not happy when I went back to school because they wanted my world to be them. Mm -hmm. If it was something they wanted to do, I was there, I had to be there to support it. But if it was me, no, you don't need to do that. I got you. I'm gonna take care of this. You don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about that. And sometimes we can confuse that with, I've got my night and shining on. Stop right there, please, <laughs> because that's, and that's the trick. They think, oh, I've never had this because they've never experienced 
a provider in a relationship mm -hmm. and a man in a relationship they never experienced a man that knows his role and his responsibility and they've lacked so long in life and in relationships and they're desiring that both both emotionally and materialistically financially that when it shows up they get caught in the trap in the manipulation because mm -hmm. Look, I'm going to do everything that you're looking for, that you're desiring, but it's going to cost you. I need all of your attention. And when the attention goes off of me, then that's when everything hits the fan. That's when the, doc, the uh, Mr. Hyde comes out. True. And and there, there was only, it didn't take me but one time to see, <laughs> see Mr. Hyde. And Mr. Hyde came out because, and when it came out, it, it shocked me. There was no physical abuse, you know. They they didn't get to that extent, but there was verbal abuse um, at that point, and that was because, you know, basically, I said no to something, and it it just threw them all off balance. That I said no, you know, to what they what they wanted, and then at that point. It was total verbal that came out. I'm sitting there looking at them like, I have never heard this from them. I had never seen this side of them. And then when they caught the look on my face, they was like, well, what's wrong with you? And I'm just like, I don't know that part of you. I ain't never seen this before. You know, but at that point, it did put me on alert that I started realizing that, Melody, this just ain't right. You know, because I was, I was, one that was trapped in that I found my knight in shining armor. You know, they they came right in. You know, I didn't have to worry about it. They were cheating. They was always there. You know, they were there. We were constantly talking. Anything I thought I wanted, I had. You know, it was nothing to say, hey, let's go shopping. I didn't ask for anything. They, they were constantly buying. We were constantly hit. We were doing that, you know. But I was trapped. <laughs> I was trapped. So that's that's another thing, ladies. We have to be careful because relationships have to have balance. Right. You 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 should not have to give up all of yourself in a relationship. Now I'm not saying you won't have to compromise something in a healthy relationship, but there has to be a balance. Just be mindful when you totally give up yourself and you're asked to give up yourself, mm -hmm. that that is not a form of abuse because that is a form of abuse. It is, totally, yes. And we have so many females, you know, that don't, and males, and I want to just exclude the males, um, but we can only talk from a female standpoint, <laughs> viewpoint. And I have so many um, women that I have counseled in the past, that I have coached in the past, that they didn't realize they were in an abusive relationship until after he left after the person left they were doing and and see people don't realize that's abuse mm -hmm. a, abuse domestic violence and a that's a abuse it's a violation a violation of your emotional of your civil of your spiritual rights of your physical rights it's a violation against them so many women are so desperate to be in, and I say, and I'm going to dare to say this, African-American women mm -hmm. are so desperate because culturally, if you don't, if you're not in a relationship, you have one or two things that are said. What's wrong with you? Are you gay? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing. If you're not a, what's wrong with you? Or are you gay? Are you a lesbian? Um, you don't like men. You know, that's, and then the next thing is, you know, it's better to have a piece of a man than no man at all. And we get trapped. And if you're a certain age, you know, if you're 25 and you don't have a relationship, you're not married, you think something wrong with you. If you've mm -hmm. been married and you get a divorce or you separate, you're in a long-term relationship and it ends and you're not immediately in a relationship well what's wrong with you because i've had men to even ask me well you're not married why why haven't you gotten married I, because i choose not to be married <laughs> but 
women don't realize that when you allow someone from the manipulation, they come in and they squander off of you. Mm-hmm. They use you, they manipulate you, and they squander off of you and your children. And they take money, food, housing, substance from you and your children, that that is abuse. Yes. And if you cannot fit meet that need ag- anymore, they leave. They leave. They leave you emotionally empty. That is abuse. And and like I said, and the, and again, those are normally they have the narcissistic tendencies, or they are just a flat out nar- narcissist. Because um, it's easy for them to walk away from something because they really truly don't have that emotional attachment to it and I, I most narcissists don't they have a problem having emotional attachment they have, yeah they're usually de- detached because they're yeah they're emotionless yeah yeah because they it's, they're so manipulative exactly. and in order to be manipulative you can't have emotional your emotions <laughs> can't come into play with exactly. it. and they're great liars they're yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. <laughs> uh, we have to rather say this, and I do, and I do want to touch on t- touch on it. We touched on it a little bit. There are many men that are being abused by women, great men, awesome men, mm-hmm. that are being physically abused by women, but are also being abused financially and emotionally by women. And we need to talk about that because that a lot of times that's not reported because most men dare not to say they are in a relationship where the female is abusing them either either physically because you have some women that are savage. <laughs> they, yeah. are, they are savage <laughs> and they are evil, you know. Now, of course, there's a whole lot that kind of plays into that just like with, with a man also. So I don't want to want you to people our viewers to think it's one-sided because there's some some issues that need to be dealt with on both sides but it's so many men that are being abused also are trapped in domestic violence and probably even more so now especially if they were the main breadwinners in the relationship and the givers and the doers and if they have lost their job or their income has um, been cut drastically I can imagine the verbal abuse, the emotional abuse that they are sustained and maybe even physical abuse that they are enduring right now. Yes. That is true. (laughs) Um, I'm reading some of the comments, you're right. A lot of men grew up in homes where the mothers were abusive. Mm. They grew up in homes where the mothers were very um, uh, physically abusive to them and also emotionally abusive to them. And I want to just throw this in because I, I raised two sons and my children tell you, mama, she hard, <laughs> you know, because, and, and I am hard on them because I have high standards and I believe if I taught you, I, I expect you to live up to those standards. Um, and I just don't put up with foolishness. Now, I, I'm not going to do that. Certain things I'm just not going to put up with. But, you know, <laughs> I had to learn early on with disciplining my children because I was the main, in my marriage, I was the main disciplinary in my marriage um, because I was the one that was there all the time, basically. But with raising boys and being a female, being a mother, you have to be um, very careful how you discipline your male child. Because if you're not careful, you can, it can go from discipline to disheartening them. Because you you know, you're you're trying to discipline, discipline them for their actions or wrongdoings, but you have to be careful um, that you're not disheartening them. And that's why it's good to have not the mother be the disciplinary, the main disciplinary, because what happened was there, you know, my husband then he wasn't the main disciplinary. And they kind of got the view as, well, mama just always on us. You know, you had one 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> one fun, one fun parent and one parent that's just, you know, I can't do anything. So, and it causes a disbalance, a, a, a unbalance in there, but it's good, you know, I, when I realized it, as I grew, you know, I realized, hey, you can't discipline them the same way because what happens is the woman, the mother is the first female, the first opposite sex relationship that your son is in, that engages in. And how you treat them and how you interact with them it's how they're going to treat their relationships. You, you heard that old saying, um, see how a man treats his mama. That's how he going to treat you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, that, and that's true. And, and that's, it's true. A lot of times, even if he came from a, 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 if the mom was abusive, if the mom, if they were in a bad relationship, nine times out of 10, they're going to treat their significant other the way that they view that male, that female relationship, that bond that they have until they come to the understanding that, you know, we have to grow and understand that um, as parents, you, you teach what you know, you know what I'm saying? You teach what you, you teach, what you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. So, but as adults, we have to understand that our parents, because, you know, we can always say, oh, you know, well, I did, I'm talk about me. I'm not going to raise my kids the way my mom and my daddy raised me. You know, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. But then, and, and I know from a, for years, my, me and my mom had an estranged relationship until I got, became an adult. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. All those things that she was trying to teach me and I was kind of going against the prick. You know, I appreciated it because she was trying to make sure I stayed focused and stayed on a path that was going to produce a greatness instead of going on a path that's going to produce me locked up mm -hmm. <laughs> because of my personality and who I was. But then as an adult, I had to realize, hey, right, wrong, or indifferent, she did the best that she could. Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with men in relationships and they're coming out of those relationships with those mothers that are, have been abusive, it's hard. They either You either become the person that abused you or you become the total opposite. Mm -hmm. That's true. You change you, yeah. yeah, it's going to be one, one end mm -hmm. of the spectrum. You know, you're going right. to be good end or you're going to become them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you just succumb. And sometimes they just succumb to that. They shrink down. I, I, I call it that 12 year old mentality. And women do it also. When you are abused, whatever time that age range that abuse started, Sometimes, because we're talking about those that those neurological trauma paths in our in our brain, they stay trapped in that twelve year old person, that twelve year old child. So when I see something similar in my adult relationship, they revert back down to that twelve year old season in their life, and they start responding and reacting from that time in their new relationships, whether it's with a man or a woman or with whoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's so true. And, and we have to be mindful, you know, of what we're dealing with when we're dealing with, you know, the other person or whatnot. And with everything going on, um, it's hard because, you know, uh, and then on the other end of the spectrum, we have those that ha may have some mental Yes. challenges before all of this started too so you know that's a whole nother that's a whole nother <laughs> show you know yeah. um to talk about yeah. so you have those with those mental challenges and now they're in a space where something on the outside was possibly their outlet or their way of dealing and coping with those issues and now they're forced to be in a home with somebody and that's gonna come out you know Yes. Um, can come out as the abuse. But again, the person, you have to still be mindful of it because from talking to people that have been and knowing people that have been physically abused, you know, we think, oh, that's crazy. Why are they doing it? But until that person, just like a drug addict, 
mm-hmm. until they realize that this is a problem, that this is not healthy. I got to get out of this. They have to realize that because you can't make them realize it. No. You cannot. The only thing you do at, at some point is you can place yourself in danger trying mm-hmm. to help somebody else that's in an abusive relationship because if they don't realize it, they ain't going nowhere. They don't see nothing wrong with it or either they may leave temporarily and go right back to it. Yes. Or either you that family member that they done called and like, you know, I need you to come to the house and you putting yourself in danger with that situation. And then less than 24 hours, that person are made up with the abuser mm-hmm. and you sitting there looking crazy. So when it comes to those, we all have to, the best we can use our best judgment and discernment when it's dealing with situations like that. And sometimes we really do have to reach out and get that help. But again, until the person that's being abused or abusing realizes that they need to get out of this situation that's not healthy, we too still have to be careful in assisting them. Yes, yes. You said the word realizing and our time is almost up, Melody. But uh, a lot of times I've noticed that people realize that they are in they are in um, damaging relationships, violent, um, um, experiencing abuse, domestic, um, verbal violence from in relationships. But because of the family dynamics and the finances, mm-hmm. people will, they will choose to stay and make excuses because well. I don't want my children to grow up without um, a two-parent family. And what we don't realize a lot of times, children know more than what we think. They pay attention to details. And when you allow male or female stay in a relationship that's unhealthy for yourselves, you produce children that grow up and produce unhealthy relationships because they mimic what they see at home. Mm-hmm. They mimic what they see at home. So, but but because we have been taught, well, just certain things um, you have to deal with. And I never forget, I was told that um, that you need to find out what you're gonna deal with. You need to put a, find out what you're gonna put up with with me. And I said, oh, wow, you know, <laughs> You tell me that I need to put up, find, determine what I'm going to put up with. And, you know, naturally, before (laughs) Jesus, before Jesus, I'm a little bigoted. (laughs) You don't tell me what I'm going to put up with. (laughs) So I said, oh, and still after Jesus, I'm going to have to say, "Mm, wait a minute now. Wait just a minute. Wait a minute. (laughs) Oh, but goes back to manipulation and, and intimidation um depending the mindset i had i would have had i would have taken that and said well maybe i do need to put up with certain things because culturally mm-hmm. um, we have been taught well you know my own and i love my father my own father even shared with me when i was a young girl you know he said this to me and um, it kind of shocked me. He said, well, just remember this. A man is always going to be a man. Meaning, you know, you're just going to have to put up with them cheating if they're going to cheat. No, you don't have to put up with that because that's a choice. But because culturally we have, um, yeah, I'm on the beach, Joshua. <laughs> um, because culturally, as black women, we have been taught, you know, you keep the relationship, you make sure you, you do everything to make sure it works and you do, but mm-hmm. not the, at the expense of your mental, spiritual and emotional health. No, sir. If they're not willing to work on it because you end up damaging, if you have children, you end up causing more damage to yourself and to your children. Yeah. Anything you want to say in closing? So somebody well, talked about, uh, I just want to give this. Um, I want to give this information because I don't want anybody to feel like because of the pandemic that there's not a way out. Because there is a way out. Safe homes of Augusta. Therefore, and this is a 24-hour 
hotline, 706-736-2499. They are actively still assisting people at this time. Also, the domestic violence hotline, their number is 1-800-799-7233. And if you're not able to talk, but you want to chat with them about getting help, it's um, thehotline.org. Um, so I basically, we, we talked about a lot. I just want everybody to know, because of what's going on, there's still help. There's still hope. You can still be safe you know, during this time. And I would also say this, um, if you're not strong enough to call the hotline, leave a message. Um, I'm a certified life coach. Melody is a life coach. I'm certified life coach and counselor. Uh, we are here to help. Mm -hmm. If you just need someone to give, to give you guidance, do that. If you don't, if you didn't get the numbers, message us after this, um, broadcast after the live and we'll make sure you get the information that you need but we want you to be safe we want you to be safe and there's a number of, of other organizations out here that will help women um, and children and also men and also men that are experiencing domestic violence during this uh pandemic time and any other time so you guys, it's the talk therapy. We enjoyed you guys. Remember to go on our YouTube at Let's Talk Tara and join our page. We're trying to reach that 10,000 um, people mark. We came on live here today. This will be uploaded onto um, YouTube. Catch us um, every Tuesday at six o'clock to 6.30. We kind of went over a little bit today. <laughs> But catch us next week. We're going to be talking about these blurred lines, blurred lines. Um, and different things. And this week it was blurred lines and domestic relationships and domestic violence. But I think we had a good topic, Melody. We did, we did. And I think it's a much needed topic during this time. Yeah. So I'm your host, Tara Stallings. I'm saying bye. And and I'm Melody and I'm saying bye. <laughs> All right. Talk to you guys later. Y'all have a good one. Have a good week. <laughs>